The FPC generator included in FL Studio is loosely based on the concept of the MPC range of hardware drum machines. Although you can use any kind of sample in it, it is well suited for building whole sample based drum kits. At the top of the plugin interface, you will see global controls for each pad. The arrows on either side of the pad number allow you to select the next or previous pad. Next to that is the pad name. Right click it to rename the pad. Next to that is the pad volume control. Then the pad pan. Mute and solo buttons. And the scale volume button will map the input note velocity to the pad name. You will normally want this on by default. If you want the FPC to handle velocity changes entirely using multiple velocity sensitive layers, then turn it off. These controls appear on all three tabs of the FPC. The matrix of 16 pads represents each note in the drum kit. For example, bass drum on one pad, snare drum on another, etc. Each pad can have multiple samples loaded within it that you can then assign velocity splits to. You can audition the sound of each pad by clicking on the pad with your mouse. Clicking on a pad will select it and the name will show at the top of the interface. Playing a pad via MIDI will cause the pad to light up but not be selected. To the left you'll see the pad MIDI note and cut group matrix. Each group of four cells corresponds with a pad in the same position in the pad matrix. The first row sets the MIDI note the pad is assigned to, the left box sets the note, and the right box sets the octave. The second row sets the cut groups for the pad. Using the cut groups you can stop the sound playing on one pad when another pad is triggered. A perfect application for this is hi-hat choke groups. This works simply by setting the cut groups on both pads to the same numbers for the cut and cut by boxes. In this example the hi-hats are all set to group 1. When a pad is selected, you can then go to the Layer Properties tab to change properties directly associated with that pad. The Layer Properties shows each sample layer in the pad. From left to right, you can control the layer volume, the layer pan, the layer tuning, preview the layer sound by clicking on the waveform display, and set the velocity split for each layer. The velocity split is defined by a minimum and maximum value. Move the sliders to affect these values. Each layer can be set to a unique velocity range, or you could also have some crossover in the velocity ranges. If you do not wish to overlap the velocity ranges, click on the Lock Layers button. In this case, it is already switched on. Switching it off allows me to overlap the velocity in and out point. Switching it back on resets the velocity ranges evenly across the full range. The Spread Even button will divide the full velocity range by the number of layers and spread each layer evenly across the velocity range. You can audition the sound of each layer within the velocity range by clicking in the test pad range. The sounding layer's range marker will glow red when you are playing a velocity within the range. You can also test the velocity splits by playing your MIDI keyboard and varying the velocity. Each layer can be selected by clicking on the selection LED on the far left. When a layer is selected you can replace the sample in the layer by clicking on the load sample button down the bottom. This will show a preview of the waveform of the selected sample. The reverse button below will reverse the sample. To add a new layer, simply click on the Create button, then load the sample down the bottom. If you have more than four layers in the pad, then a scroll bar will appear on the right of the tab to allow you to see the other layers. To delete a layer, select the layer and press the Delete button. To change the order of layers, select a layer and then click on the Layer Up or Down buttons. The last tab contains a mixing desk to control the entire kit. Each strip replicates the controls found in the main pad properties at the top of each tab. From bottom to top you have the pad name, the solo and then mute buttons, the volume slider, the pad pan, and the box at the top is the target mixer track offset. Here you can set the track in the FL Studio mixer that the pad will sound through. If you have the overall output of the FPC set to track 1, but you set the track offset on the pad to 2, then that pad will play through track 3. The last part of the FPC we will look at is the MIDI drum loop loader at the top right of the plugin interface. Click on the open drum loop button to navigate to where you have a MIDI drum loop saved on your hard drive. Load the loop and the loop will automatically be placed on the piano roll for the FPC channel. Use the next and previous loop buttons to move through any other loops that are loaded in the folders of the first one you opened up. And just as a final note, to make editing drum grooves in the piano roll easier, the name of each pad is displayed in place of the actual note name.